Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Randy Doyle and one of the requests we had was talking about forced action technology or gear tools as they're known in the industry. And so today we're going to dive in deep to the key features and benefits of gear driven or as they're called force action tools by we've got three manufacturers up here today is we've got Makita, Flex and Rupes. Before we dive into some of the features, benefits and why I really enjoy the forced action technology and what it's done for numerous detailing industry or businesses across the industry. Let's talk about some facts that we're dealing with right now, currently in the modern day. Is at the filming of this in 2022, we are seeing factory, I'm talking brand new cars, where the clear coat and the paint systems are thinner than ever. A matter of fact, these numbers just a few years ago, these were common numbers when you went to bargain basement repaint or, or uh, collision centers. I'm talking the cheapest of cheapest. Now we're seeing those low level numbers on factory paints coming out of the factory. Now there are manufacturers that are still making really good quality paint systems with a lot of healthy paint on them. But unfortunately the trend is trending towards, guess what? It saves them a lot of money, the manufacturers, to go with thinner, cheaper paints. And we, as either hobbyists and or professionals, are paying the price. So now, the common tools in the industry, is I go back, I'm still never gonna have the hours on any of these tools that I have on a rotary. Most of my career has been spent with a rotary in my hand. Um, and then you've got dual action, is dual action polishers or large throw polishers, as they're commonly called today, uh, have really taken a great stand. One of the things that has kind of gone by the wayside is the technology with a gear driven or forced action tool. One of the things I think that's kind of uh, misused is the name. I've never liked the name forced action or gear driven, even though it's gear driven, really forced action, it, it kind of is a rough name for me. If you could imagine taking a rotary tool and then taking a DA tool and those technologies mating or coming together is that's what you've got with a gear driven tool is you've got the rotary sensation that a rotary polisher gives you but you've got a throw not as large a throw sometimes quite a bit smaller in the uh, case of the Makita and the Rupe S uh, but what you've got here in my estimate and, and, and I stand behind this this is where I could have probably put on my bulletproof vest is that I think that in today's world and the realities of modern day OEM factory paints is that the best technology to use is a gear driven or forced action tool and here's why rotary rotary is a great tool I'm never going to take that away from it but on factory modern day paints as you're seeing all too many people eat through healthy clear coat let's go through some science and I'm going to put this in layman terms and it's up for debate I know that everybody's got their opinion but before I do is this is not bragging rights, this is telling you some facts. I have worked on the factory floors at Tesla, Porsche, BMW, Audi, uh, Ram, Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, and also what is known as Fisker is a Karma car factory in Riverside, California, actually out in Moreno Valley. So I've been on all those factory floor, floors, some of them as a guest, other ones as a consultant. And so I can tell you this from firsthand experience of talking to the actual people that are painting these vehicles is first off is painting is a process that is now rushed. Uh, actually heating the paints up to the, the baking the paints like they used to do. A lot of the manufacturers, I can't say all of them, but a lot of the manufacturers simply aren't taking that process or doing it to the degree that they once did that would create really nice paint jobs. They're rushing it, time is money, especially in the modern day era where cars are at a shortage and they're just not able to get enough cars onto the market. Now it's up for another debate and we'll actually talk about that another time. But what's happening is with these ever, ever thinning clear coats is that in my, and this is just in my recommendation, the safest tool to use is gonna be a forced action. The reason why is it's a predicted, it knows there's no stalls on it and it's a measured count. So it's gonna do the same thing. If you've got it on speed six, it's gonna have the same rotation every single time you turn it the only thing that can deviate is your angle of attack, where you're putting that on there, and then also the pressure. So why hasn't forced action caught on? And I say this with all respect to the manufacturers, is that it back, all the way back in 2007, I was given an opportunity to work with Flex. Now, companies have taken and introduced force action tools before. Flex was the first one that really took advantage of this in our industry, in the detailing industry. So I was given an early opportunity to work with the 3401 
actually before launch date. And, and uh, uh, Bob Eichelberg uh, built some trust into me, uh, really wanted my opinion, and honestly, I fought it. And the main reason why is that I think it's still a main reason why today is that the manufacturers just really don't know what to do with these tools. Is that they've got them, but here's the biggest difference is hands-on, I've got thousands of hours of hands-on experimenting, testing, actual detailing uh, at a very high profitable level, but even more so is I've trained hundreds of people how to use this tool is that the first year I had it, uh, within days, I put it down. I said, man, this thing's weird. I'm a rotary guy. But Rod Leitner, a good friend of mine, kept encouraging me. Uh, we kept sending it back and forth. And he said, man, I think I'm catching on to something. Now, Rod uh, was a really, uh, he, he was OCD in detailing. And a matter of fact, Rod was, is OCD in everything he does. But he really kept pushing me to take and test the limits of this. So. Um, we, we really invested a lot into the technology of seeing what it would do. And with that came along an opportunity with some of the artifacts, the airplanes we work with that are bare and cladded aluminum. And what that did is it allowed us to, to, to test out back in the day before uh, Rupes really introduced a whole new level of DA with the large throws, is what we did is we started using these, the, the forced action, uh, specifically the 3401, on bare and cladded aluminum. And what we found out is that rotary, we were getting a certain pattern in that. And while you could fine tune that, the skill base set, my guys and I, when we first took on the project way back in 2003, is even then we were, we were finishing down with drum buffers. Going back into 04 through 08 is that we started using different DAs and, and, and started getting our skill set to the point to where we could finish down with a rotary. But then 08 hits and we start getting our hands onto forced action. We found out the finishing ability of this tool, not only could it cut, but because it's an eight millimeter throw is it and the right hands could finish. That really blew us away. That was a game changer for us because we knew that if you've ever polished aluminum, you know this is the most sensitive black paint in the world right now is is a bare aluminum, especially uh, an artifact, something that's very old, uh, it's a thousand times more difficult to finish down. Yet we are getting a finished quality with the force action tool. Uh, flash forward, now we've got DA technology. DA technology didn't change our opinion of forced action. Matter of fact, working with DAs, uh, when Rupes came out with theirs, is it taught us something about force action. Again, is that we got the same count on the same speed is that we weren't going into stalls. As long as the user is paying attention is that you could get amazing finishing and using the Rupes tools, the 15 and the 21, it actually taught us how to be more balanced and centered using the forced action tools. So now, now we come into play where Rupes introduces theirs, Makita introduces theirs. A little different tool because each one of these have a five millimeter throw versus the eight millimeter throw and each one of these are a little stronger. So now let's go into other people coming into the forced action tool market and changing it again. And again, both of these, smaller throw, closer to a rotary, uh, you could get a much better, faster cut on cutting. The problem that we found is, is that five millimeter throw, you couldn't finish down quite as good as you could with the 3401. So with the 3401, you were giving up a little bit of that cut advantage that both of these tools have but you were getting a little better, easier finishing quality uh, with, with the eight millimeter throw. Now we teach and train people on all of these tools, including large throw DAs, but here's where I tie this back in. This is scientific for us, my opinion only. When I say my opinion only, I'm also speaking out to a lot of the students that we teach. And what we do is while we're here is we're gonna put science, a paint gauge, to proof of what I'm stating today on this video. And this is the first time I've ever gone public with this. Um, so what we do is my feeling on a modern day, this is speaking not 10 year old paints, not five year old paints, brand new thin paints. What we're seeing is, is with the force technology, I don't care which one you're doing, compared to a rotary, and a lot of times even compared to a DA, is that comparing it to a rotary, what we're seeing is we're taking out an equal amount of, of imperfections or if we've sanded, we're taking out the sanding marks 
not only are we taking it out and, and, and taking less healthy clear coat off, we're taking off a little faster because of the dynamics of these tools and the mechanisms. And again, it's a lot of know-how. We've put, uh, collectively as a group, we put tens of thousands of hours into these tools. And what we're seeing is, is that the forced action is leaving the clear coat more intact than any other tool on the market. Now, let me clarify that, is we've taken a lot of time to learn these tools. And so with that, is a paint gauge has been our friend going all the way back to our first use of any of these tools, including the rotary. And time and time again, is the science behind it shows that we're taking off less clear coat. Now, a rotary, I don't want to hurt you. If you're somebody who's into rotary, I get it. I am going to caution you this. When you're taking into consideration modern day paint systems and a rotary, in my opinion, and the opinions of a lot of people I work with, is that you're going way too aggressive, you're getting into that, the little bit of healthy clear that's there, you're going through it very quickly, and again, a paint gauge does not lie. Now, there's other means of measuring this, and we've worked with a lot of people. Michael Hill, one of my good friends, uh, he's actually a scientist, he's a physicist. Uh, we've worked with him and a lot on this discussion. The other thing we've worked with is Boeing. Boeing, the Museum of Flight, uh, and the DOD, Department of Defense. Because of the fact that a lot of these artifacts that we're working on have got limited amount of, of a protective bonding. And so now on, on paints, you're used to hearing that we've got clear coat. Now on some of this aluminum, there's bare aluminum, there's cladded aluminum. In the early days, going back almost 20 years ago, what they're coming to in and using instruments to do is seeing how much cladding we're removing from these aircraft. And ironically, again, going back, this is kind of what sold me on the technology of forced action was, we are seeing large, large amounts of cladding removed with traditional rotary, and we are seeing minimal amounts used, removed with the forced action gear tools and the DAs. The problem was, on the DA technology, we were having to do multiple passes to get the same kind of results we were getting with forced action. Then, when we remeasured, we are actually taking and removing more of the clear cladding than we were with the forced action. So, scientifically, that point, I love this tool. Now, there are some disadvantages. A lot of people, especially over on the Flex, it spins the opposite way we're used to. I totally get it. But when it comes to these two tools, they actually spin the way that you're accustomed to the tool spinning. Now, I detail both right and left-handed, so it wasn't an, a big adjustment at all for me. I was used to it almost the second that I used it, but the first couple hours I was on it, it does spin the opposite direction. The thing that this does is both of these manufacturers took it back into a commonality with professionals and with DIYers, and they made it spin in the right direction. Uh, Flex has stayed with that program. Uh, again, I'm comfortable with it. A lot of people I know are comfortable with it, but some aren't. The other thing is, is that once you get used to this, again, I'm gonna kind of repeat myself a little bit, is this technology, it's predictable. Is unlike a DA that's gonna stall, and sometimes if you put stall indicators on there, you're gonna see that it will even go backwards at a time. This is not gonna do this. You're gonna get regular measured results with this, and the smoothness is unbeatable, no matter what the manufacturer is. Let's talk durability for a second. So on a force action tool, uh, force actions and uh, dual actions, large, large throw machines, both have a lot of moving parts. Now, a rotary in, in, in all my years, in truth and advertising, uh, and I have no time with any of these brands, by the way. There's no rewards for me doing this. This is just factual information that we've learned through years and years and years. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm afraid to say decades. Okay? So, this is the fact that the most reliable tool on the market today is, is a rotary is it does one thing and it does it really well. We, 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 we very seldom have a problem mechanically with a rotary machine. I will tell you this though, whether it's DA or forced action, the, we live in a time where these machines are extremely durable, extremely. With that being said, we have had better luck and these things seem to be stand up to heavy, heavy use a little better than a DA. I think the fact that it's, if you look at the, the internals of this, the mechanics of these things, they are absolutely beefy. And so with that being said, is being on big projects, working 12, 13, 14 hours a day with these machines going almost nonstop, is we've seen very little problems develop through that heavy usage. So that should also be a consideration. So my last closing challenge to you is this, keep an open mind. So if you haven't used force action a great deal, 
find someone that's really comfortable using it, that knows it. Uh, it's just like anybody that's a pilot. As each time that you transition into a different airframe, you've got to get you got to get some specialized training in that airframe because you're not going to just simply jump from one make to another. Is you're going to have to get typed in it. So kind of think of it professionally. The other thing I'm going to do is just just keep an open mind as you're using it. Put it in your hands a lot. Talk to other people. We have clinics all over the world. Each one of these manufacturers are good at, at great, especially Rupes. They've got a, 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 an amazing. Uh, amazing training opportunity in a learning facility that you can't beat. Uh, also look at ours. We've got training facilities all over the country that we do one days and we're really, really big into the force action technologies and sharing with those that attend uh, the commonality and how to use these tools in their best. So I hope this is helpful. I know it's kind of a debatable subject. It's something that's close to my heart. I really believe in this. We've seen the evolution of these tools change is going all the way back to 08, you've seen new players come into it. I can tell you right now, that's not gonna change. And I hope, I hope that our discussions about forced action tools or gear tools starts to take note on other manufacturers and we see new technology, even better technology come into play that will take and make our detailing not only safer, better, but more enjoyable. So, hey, I'm Rennie Doyle. Uh, please, if you like this video, make a comment, share, Make sure to just smack that subscribe button, smack that like button. And again, I'd love to hear from you. Send me an email direct, Renny, R-E-N-N-Y, at DetailingSuccess.com. Love to hear from you all. Until the next time, take care. Happy detailing. Pick up a forced action. Change your opinion. We'll see you next time.